Okay, good morning everybody. Thank you for the possibility to present the study here. The randomized controlled ASAP trial was conducted by the Study Alliance Leukemia and the German Cooperative Transplant Study Group. And the trial was sponsored in a financial and legal sense by DKMS, the Stem Cell Donor Center and international non-profit organization. Current intensive salvage chemotherapy protocols for high-risk AML lead to complete remission in only 50% of patients. In spite of this moderate chance of success, the current standard approach for patients with refractory or relapse AML is to attempt a complete remission prior to transplantation. And complete remission is often considered as a gateway for transplantation. As an alternative, so-called sequential conditioning regimens have been developed. They combine AML type chemotherapy with reduced intensity conditioning and transplantation in a tight schedule of less than two weeks. Good outcomes with these regimens in a series of prospective trials for patients with active disease prompted us to question the benefit of salvage chemotherapy prior to transplantation. Our hypothesis was that salvage chemotherapy would not provide a net benefit for patients with high-risk AML. In order to test this hypothesis, patients with non-favorable risk AML and poor response after first induction chemotherapy or first untreated AML relapse were randomized one-to-one -one between standard remission induction, abbreviated RIST, and disease control, abbreviated DISC. In the remission induction arm, patients received high-dose cetarabin and mitoxantrin. Patients were referred for transplantation after remission assessment and conditioning intensity was tailored to the level of residual disease and patient's condition. In the disease control arm, patients received low-dose cytarabin or single doses of mitoxantrin when clinically needed. Otherwise, patients were watched only. In this arm, patients proceeded to transplantation ASAP as soon as possible, and sequential conditioning was scheduled in this arm. Statistically, the goal of the trial was to demonstrate non-inferiority for the primary endpoint disease-free survival at day 56. We tested against a non-inferiority margin of 5%. As you can see on this slide, baseline characteristics were well balanced between the two study arms. Patients had a median age of 61 years with a range up to 75 years. All patients had active disease, two-thirds divided by poor, poor induction response, and one-third defined by relapsed AML. Here we show the patient flow in the experimental arm. The median time to transplantation was four weeks. Notably, 76% of the patients were cared for by watchful waiting only during this period. 84% of the patients received sequential conditioning. And at 16 weeks from randomization, 97% of the intention to treat population had been transplanted. In the control arm, showed, uh, shown on the right side, height side, side, inside, every second patient achieved a complete remission with salvage chemotherapy. The median time to transplantation was eight weeks. I would like to highlight that most patients who had not achieved a CR still proceeded to transplantation. 72% again after sequential conditioning. In this arm, 93% of, of the patients had been transplanted by week 16 from randomization. Integrating this information resulted in the following success rates. 84% in the disease control arm compared to 81% in the remission induction arm. Against a one-sided significance level of 2.5%, we missed statistical significance. However, given the results of this trial, the probability that the true success rate in the experimental arm is below the non-inferiority margin is only 4.7%. This is the type 1 error. Disease-free survival at day 56 is not an accepted surrogate endpoint after transplantation, and we acknowledge this. So here we show long-term outcomes. On the left-hand side, we show leukemia-free survival of patients who met the primary endpoint. You see, there's no difference between the two treatment arms. On the right-hand side, we show overall survival from randomization according to the intention to treat. Again, there's no difference. What can we say about patient safety? 
the number of patients with ad adverse events grade 3 or higher was much lower in the disease control arm, 23% compared to 64% in the remission induction arm. Most notably, before transplantation, patients spent on average 23 days less in hospital in the disease control arm. Yet, time to discharge and in-hospital mortality after transplantation did not differ between the two arms. Our conclusions are, patients with poor response after first induction chemotherapy or first relapse of AML do not benefit from salvage chemotherapy with hydrocyderabin plus anthracycline prior to transplantation. Watchful waiting and sequential conditioning prior to allogeneic transplantation results in comparable CR rates and overall survival and may be the preferred option whenever a stem cell donor is readily available. Patients spend less time in hospital with disease control compared to remission induction and experience fewer adverse events. A more general conclusion and forward-looking statement is that the benefit of any treatment aiming at better results after allogeneic transplantation by inducing a CR prior to transplantation should be demonstrated in prospective clinical trials. And with this I would like to conclude.